Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today, we're going to talk about HTTP cookies and some changes that are being made to default behavior in Chrome and likely to follow in other browsers as well. But for Chrome, it's more immediate in that uh, this month, in fact, they're going to change the behavior of the attribute on a cookie called same site. But before we get to that, let's talk about what cookies are and what they do first. So um, an HTTP cookie, is just a, it's a, a blob of text, okay? So it's a text string that the server sets, so it's set by a server, and it is sent to clients and stored on the web browsers, okay? Um, well, stored by the client, typically a web, a, a web browser. And then anytime the client needs uh, to make a request to the server, depending on what kind of request that is, those cookies are then sent back to the server. They can be used for managing sessions or by, uh, you know, ad tracking or, you know, any kind of marketing purposes. Uh, cookies are used by a lot of things, but session management, um, some people uh, store credentials in there, which don't know that I would recommend that, but, but uh, uh, some sites do. And so uh, within, uh, the concept of the cookies, there's, there's a context based on the request, and that is a, it's um, a first party context or a third party context. And there is a second party context, but it's treated exactly like first party, and that's usually with a data sharing agreements. Um, so, but first and second party act the same way, so we'll just talk about these two. And so the first party is like if you type in a URL, you're gonna to go to devcentral.com and of all the requests coming in for that request, match devcentral.com, um, that's a first party or same site. Now, if you have scripts, whether it's uh, uh, analytics from Google or whatever, uh, or an iframe, so I, like we embed this Lightboard lesson from YouTube into devcentral, that would be a third party or a cross-site request, okay? And cross-site requests have a security implication, and you may know that as CSRF or cross-site request forgery. And to give a really simple example, if you have a bad actor sitting out here, Mr. Skull and Crossbones, that's terrible. That looks kind of like a sad comma. But anyway, you got a bad actor here, and he wants to prepare a, um, a request for a funds transfer on a site or any kind of a transaction. And so he'll forge that and then he will send that. So that's step one. He'll, he'll rec uh, recreate some kind of forged request. And then he will embed that request in a link and then send that to um, a user either through the malware or, or some kind of a, a compromised site to a visitor of this site the, of the forged request, visitor of that request, okay? And so then this visitor on this other site will then click whatever that link was that was shared, um, either because of phishing attempts or because they just get click happy on stuff that they receive. And when they click that, that inadvertently sends um, that forged request to this site. And when that site receipt gets the request and this user happens to be logged into that site, it says, hey, I know who that is and they're logged in and I received the request. I'm gonna go ahead and validate that request. And so that transaction, we'll give that a nice big checkbox with some dollar signs, and and so you know that that funds transfer, whatever that tran that, that transaction is, um, is completed, and so um, you know that's a successful uh, cross-site request forgery. And so, what we have with the cookie developments is this attribute called a same site, and beginning in Chrome version 80, stable, 
which I believe is out, but they're, they're going to start rolling out a change to this same site attribute in a cookie uh, beginning the week of Feb 17th. And they're not rolling it out to everyone. Initially, it's going to be a, a rollout um, that, that is going to be metered. But what they're going to do is that for, for cookies that have no same site settings, they're going to set the default to lax. What that means is that the cookies will be sent if a user navigates to another third party, but otherwise they won't. And so if you need, oh, well, let me go through the settings real quick. We'll, we'll get into the details. So the other options are strict and none. So you have lax, strict, and none. Strict means that the cookies uh, for any particular site are not going to be sent beyond the local uh, site period. Um, even if you have cookies to the other site, um, they're not going to be sent on that request if, if they came from, from here. Uh, lax means that if, if the other first party, so you navigate away from that page with a link on that page, it'll go ahead and send the cookies with the setting of lax. None means that they're going to go ahead and send all the cookies um, because the, the same site setting is none. It's like, really? We don't care? Go ahead. But the caveat to that is that you also have to have the secure attribute, which means it does have to be an SSL connection. And so none and secure will, um, will kind of cr create the effect of how you have always expected cookies to work. So that requires that you are explicit in setting your cookie. So today, if you're an app developer and you don't use the same site directive at all, then you need to go test and see how this works out for you um, and your applications. And you might need on some of your cookies to go ahead and set none and secure to your cookies. It's always good to be explicit anyway. And so maybe you're fine with same site equals lax and you're going to let Chrome take care of that. But every browser acts a little bit different. So being, being explicit is a good thing. And, and maybe there's some cookies where you need to be strict. You, you absolutely don't want that cookie going anywhere except your site. You think about uh, financial sites and, and all that. So same site is, is critical tool for beating cross-site request forgery, but you know, any one setting on anything is not a panacea. Defense and depth is important. So what needs to be done? How, how do you, you know, engage with this? Well, really the work belongs to the app developers. They need to decide how their cookies need to work whether it's their cookies or the third parties that they incorporate into their application experience. And so that can be changed at the app level, but with infrastructure like Big IP, um, you know, you can use iRules or local traffic policies. As a mitigation until, you know, whether there are lockdowns on apps, freezes, code freezes, or you just don't have the experience on your app team, maybe it's a really old app and, and nobody touches it ever because they're worried it'll break. You can use a, a mitigation on your infrastructure in front of that to be able to set that attribute on the cookies that you pass uh, back to your clients. Also, you can test today. If you go into your Chrome browser and go to flags, there's two flags in there that you can set. Uh, same site by default and uh, cookies without same site um, must be secured. So those two settings on that page, if you, you know, check the box and enable those, then you will have the behavior of where Chrome will eventually be by default all the time at um, the default equals lax. If you go in and set those, that's same site equals lax is, is what you'll be setting for. So you can go test your own website. Hey, does everything behave the way we want it to behave? So anyway, hopefully this gives you insight into where Chrome is going, where the other browsers are likely to go, and what you might need to do as an app developer or an infrastructure manager in front of your applications, what you might need to do about that, what you as just a user of websites might need to do to go test the, the sites that you use. Maybe you can get in front of this and tell your app, hey, 
this is gonna change, it's gonna impact my experience as a customer, can you do something about this? So thank you for joining, hopefully this has been informative. Um, if you like this video, click subscribe and we'll see you out there in the community.